So picture this, you just got done with a video shoot, you take your SD card out of your camera and you put it into your computer and you expect to see all the MP4 video files that you recorded, but instead you see files that end with RSV and then when you go to try to play them, they do nothing. This was the exact situation that I was in a month ago. And if you are in this situation, you're in luck because I'm gonna show you how to convert those RSV files into MP4 files. So let me just give you a quick backstory of what happened to me. So I recorded a video podcast where I had a four camera setup and literally the camera, which was on the host, you know, the person hosting the whole thing where he's talking into the camera, he's addressing the audience. That was the um, file that ended up coming out as an RSV file. So there was no way that I would have been able to put together that video without fixing that shot. So I'm gonna just get straight to the point here. Pretty much um, with uh, RSV file, RSV stands for raw still video. Now I know exactly how I, you know, in a sense corrupted my video file. So what happened was that video shoot that I'm speaking of, it was about maybe a hour and a half conversation. And I was recording on my FX 30, which um, overheating wasn't an issue, but I actually had a 64 gigabyte um, card inside of that camera and I was recording at 30 frames a second. So I think you get about 54 minutes. So as I was approaching that time, I'm like, dang, I'm gonna have to switch it. But you know, I already have like an establishment shot. So even if he addresses the camera as I'm, you know, stopping the, uh, the shot, putting one memory card from slot two into slot one, you know, I may miss a moment, but you know, it is what it is. I have multiple cameras I can cut in between. So what I did was I stopped the uh, record on my FX30 and instead of letting, instead of waiting about five seconds for the, you know, file to just, you know, stop correctly, where it, I don't know if you ever noticed it, if you hit stop on your camera, it like reads the file real quick, you know, just to make sure that it saves properly. I didn't do that. I hit stop and I immediately took the memory card out. So I corrupted my own video in doing that. And there are other ways that your video can end up be corrupted as well. Like say if your camera does overheat or it does like die, you know, battery wise, there's a way that, you know, it's a possibility rather that your file will not get saved correctly. But if you have an RSV file, like I said, you are in luck. So I'm gonna take you into my computer real quick and I'm gonna show you the exact steps. I actually still have that RSV file on the memory card that I use, I'm gonna show you the exact steps that I use to convert this file into a playable video. Let's go. All right, so welcome to the inside of my computer and please excuse this wild uh, desktop I have right here. So anyway, this is the very same memory card that I recorded it on. And as you can see, this was my file name right here, the C2083 RSV. So when I saw that, I'm like, hold on, what is this? I go to click on it and nothing. It's, it's loading, it's telling me no application can open this document. And I'm like, document, this is supposed to be a video. Like, what are we talking about here? We have a document that's 59 gigabytes in size. So I said, okay, I gotta relax, calm down. What can I do to fix this? Because there has to be some way, because obviously these 59 gigs, there is some data here, but I, I need it to be a video, not a document, right? So recently, um, at least recent to that time, I had came across this um, um, application right here called Wondershare Recover It. Now, the reason that I had downloaded this was actually because I had an old hard drive where I wanted to pull um, like photographs and old videos off of. So I had got that to, for that purpose to recover um, you know, that old stuff. And then I saw on here, it said corrupted video repair. So I'm like, hmm, maybe this might be something that could help me out. So basically I use this software and let me just show you how it works real quick. So when you go to corrupted video repair, I go to add video. Um, we can just actually just slide our RSV file in there and it's adding the RSV file. And as you can see here, um, here we are. We have our RSV file, 55 gigabytes, and it says that all this is missing. So I'm like, missing, missing, what does that even mean? I didn't know at the time, right? So when you go to repair, you know, it goes to repair it, and then it says, uh, you know, looks like it doesn't work. So I said, well, that I guess that doesn't work. Then I see it says advanced repair here. So I said, well, what does that mean? Let me just click advanced repair. It's analyzing my video. So right here, they say you need a sample video. So basically, 
what they want you to do is um, to go along with the RSV file, they want you to provide another file. Basically, what I did was I recorded with the same FX30 camera on the same memory card, the same settings. I, it was literally the next day, so I didn't even change the settings. So let me show you this clip right here. Actually, let me pull this back up. Hold on. Now I go here. So basically, what I did was um, recorded this file right here. Um, and basically it's just my son sitting at, uh, up at the counter eating or playing his iPad or something. And like I said, it was the same exact settings, um, when he was on the couch. So if I open that up, you know, use that as my sample video, cause basically essentially the RSV files, since it's the raw, just uncompressed data, they know that it's data there, but they don't know what to do with it. So by providing that sample video, you let the um, system know like, hey, well, matter of fact, I'm not even gonna explain it. I'm just gonna show you. So here we go. This is everything that's missing. And then you'll see everything pop up on this side. So basically, you know, goes from RSV to MP4. It's a Sony file. This is the total amount of size, a 4K image, um, the camera model, that's the FX30 model number h264 and 29 basically 30 frames per second right so that is how um the system is able to identify you know the specs in a sense of the corrupted file to know how to compress this raw still video which is the rsv file so after you do that you hit repair and this thing i'm not going to walk you through this whole thing now let me tell you after it was finished what i got I thought I was out of the woods, but I was not out of the woods yet. So let me show you, and I still have the save copy, as you'll see, let me go back here. Yeah, see, I used it February 1st, recover it. So this is actually the file that this system ended up rendering me out and it almost made me cry. Look at this. I was like, why is this guy doing the Harlem Shake? You know, this is a raw file. It looks like how it looks, but the whole thing was shaky, jittery, like it's like looking just mad, just, I don't know, robotic. And it's like that the whole way, like they're all just doing, look at that. I'm like, how am I, how am I gonna use this? Even though it looks clear, you know, still it was shot in S log three, I'm still able to edit it. I can color it, you know, crop and do what I need to do, but, the whole entire video over an hour they're doing the harlem shake and i said no i said no there's no way i've come this far finding the program you know figuring out you know what an rsv file is and how to fix it and do all this stuff there's no freaking way that like i came this far to be defeated so i just pretty much use common sense as it relates to sony um, I'm not even sure if this is something that happens on Canon cameras, Nikon cameras. I think this is an exclusive Sony thing as far as the RSV file. Don't quote me on that because I do not know. But something just told me, you know, I just thought Catalyst Browse for some reason because I know that that's their editor. That's their like their software. I know when you're doing like the stabilization and they got like the gyro data and all that. I'm like, let me see what happens if I throw this video inside Catalyst Browse. So let me take you to that. I already have Catalyst Browse up. Well, no, I had Catalyst Browse up. Let's pull Catalyst Browse up. And as that loads, I will queue up my footage. Again, this is the Harlem Shake video. Let's make sure. Yep, this is the Harlem Shake video here. So what I did was I said, let me throw this video in Catalyst Browse, which is Sony's flagship whatever editor. And let's just see what happens. I throw it in Catalyst Browse, here it is from the beginning, and then, boom, it plays normal. It plays freaking normal. I mean, I cannot tell you. When I saw this, it was like, I did it. It was like, you know, I made it. I saved the day. You know, all these programs saved the day. Whatever you want to call it, I was freaking happy as hell. So basically, once I put it in Catalyst Browse, um, I kind of cut it down because the first like maybe like eight minutes was just like footage I didn't need. And what I did was like I, um, you know, cut it down from the start and exit time or out time that I needed exactly. So I, you know, 
wouldn't have more data than I needed because it took a little while to actually render out. So essentially what I did was I just rendered it from Catalyst Browse as a new file. Um, I think it kept the majority of the uh, quality. To be honest with you, I've never rendered anything from Catalyst Browse ever. So I think I tried to like make sure it had like the best or same settings, bit rate and all that type of stuff. And um, one thing I didn't get is it went from a 55 gigabyte, you know, raw video. And I think when I finally actually, um, when I finally actually rendered it from Catalyst Browse, it turned into like a 1.4 gig file, which is good for space. But again, they go from 55, 54 gigs to one gig. And I only really cut out maybe like 10 minutes of footage, give or take, maybe eight to 10 minutes of footage. That was a little bit like, oh, I hope this isn't low quality. Um, I hope I'm not making it low quality. But at the same time, you know, as I told you, this guy, a lot of his clips were looking directly in the camera, you know, when he's, you know, giving segues and changing topics. So if I was not able to fix this, the whole, the whole production would have been shot. There would have been no show. I would have had to refund him his money that he paid me and been like, look, bro, I messed up, you know, and this is how. So again, I think the first lesson in this is, um, if you find yourself in a situation like me where you got to change your memory card out because the camera is going to die and you're trying to move real fast, even if you're recording with multiple cameras or you're just trying to be fast, say you're at an, at an event or something, make sure you give your camera that extra second just to store that footage on the memory card. Because if you move too fast and you take that card out while it's doing that, after you stop recording, you're going to mess up your file. And also to remember, um, recover it wondershare is the program i'll have the link of that to them down below i don't have any affiliation with them so you know this is just all for you guys who have the same issue uh like i said wondershare recover it is the program um you probably already have catalyst browse especially if you're a sony shooter i'll put the link down there to that as well and yeah man if you ever have an rsv file don't worry it's not the end of the world um don't quote me on that 100 because this worked for me i'm sure it's a case by case situation but i think if you have that raw still video as they call it um you know as long as it saves as at least as an rsv file from what from my experience i think that you will be good so share this video with your fellow you know sony shooters anybody in the videography filmmaking community so you know you can get this out there because probably something i should have just knew um you know so i didn't have to mentally take myself through so much just stress behind it but anyway if you did find some value in this video i would appreciate it if you just take a moment to just give it a like a thumbs up that would be cool subscribe to my channel for more filmmaking tips tools and gear reviews i feel like my channel is really becoming more of a gear review type of channel this microphone that i'm actually using right here was actually sent to me for free um i know i'm holding it and it has like a desk mount but i actually like the way this feels very good quality microphone i haven't really used it a lot yet but review on this coming soon and i will catch you guys in my next video peace out